Is it just me or the future of anime games looking kind of spooky? So I was watching this new video from a YouTuber called Globku when he was playing this game that looked familiar and I recognized it as one of the games was, that was shown in Sony's, I think it was their summer press conference, so like a substitute for what was E3, right? And they showed this, this sort of anime looking Zelda game. And I was like, wow, this is a really cool RPG. I can't wait to see what they do with it in the future. And now I've learned that it's coming out next week, which I'm gonna play it probably on this channel. But I was watching Globku play it and it seems as though the game is a gacha game. And that is really the main reason why I'm making this video today, just to talk about the future of where the anime games are going, to be honest, because at this point, they're now making games that look like just these, you know, standalone, story-driven action RPG games. But in the actual fact, behind the scenes, there are these RPGs where you just have to roll for the characters and roll for the, uh, the weapons and stuff like that, which you do have to do in this game. And it's just crazy to me. And if you guys haven't seen it, I have some gameplay on the screen of the game here so you can actually see what I'm talking about because it's actually going to be available for now uh, Android, iOS, PC, and PlayStation 4. And at this point, I'm thinking, hold on a minute. Are you meaning to tell me that these kind of games are now going to start reaching consoles? And I know this isn't an anime licensed game, right? This is just an anime style game. But who's to say that they won't make the next, let's say, I don't know, Naruto game an action adventure game that just so happens to be a gacha game at the end of the day? Because it seems as though this technique is working, right? All these gacha games from Japan are now being played. They have, most of them have global versions. Of, now, actually, most of the new ones are having both a global and Japanese version coming out at the same time, which was really not the case back in the day. A lot of the games that we play now that have global versions, they only came out in Japan and they only realized there was an audience for it after a year or so, and then they released it for the global audience. So, But in this case, now they're all coming out at the same time. And the quality of these games are rising. I'm not gonna lie and say that they're still these really bad games that don't really have anything to, to them, you know, to make them fun. They do. The only issue is, it's the fact that they're a gacha game. So there is an insane grind. There is a pay to win aspect uh, that goes into them. But this one in particular, I'm not too sure anymore. Like, I, I need to get my hands on the game to understand how it works. Because this Genshin Impact game, it literally looks like like an anime Zelda, right? It has the, the, the makings of Breath of the Wild in it, right? So you go out into the world, you can go and venture. There's an overarching story, as of pretty much all the other gacha games as well though. But in this case, it just seems more of just a, a regular action game than one of these games where you have to pay to summon for these characters and stuff like that. So I need to see how it goes. Uh, but the future isn't looking... I don't really want that future to come to pass because I still am a fan of just having a standalone experience that's given to you. And if they want to add DLC later, they can just add a whole new story arc or a new character to play around with or something like that. I don't really like these sort of games as a service to be honest because it, it kind of just promotes having the bare minimum at launch and then filling up with stuff later that you have to continuously pay for and especially if you drop the gacha aspect into it it's no longer just paying for what you want it's actually paying for something random you might just get keep getting the same thing over and over you you might have to spend endless amounts of money just to get the new character rather than in you know just a standalone game the new character you just pay one fee like i don't know 3.99 for it and then you get the character so, um, it's looking spooky, but I just wanted to jump on here to talk about that, to be honest, because that was just something that was on my mind that I wanted to put out in the video. Uh, tell me what you think about it in the comment section below, and if you haven't joined the Discord, there is a link for it in the description below. We do talk about stuff like this also on the regular in the Discord, so if you want to join, if you want to talk about this kind of stuff and you don't want to just stay in the comment section below, just hop in the Discord. And also follow me on Twitter, because it's actually in the description as well. And I, I never say that in the videos, I never say follow me on Twitter, but I do have one and I do use it, so... Follow me on that there. So anyway, it's been Swifty and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.